Hey there, it's The Shooting Guy. Thanks for joining me today. You know what? We're here to uh, take care of an issue with our fireplace. It was a very minor issue, but it got, it got called out in section one during the inspection. And that is the flume uh, is broken. At least that's what the section one says. So uh, we agreed to do all section one work when we sold this home. But this one's gonna be a real simple one. It's not broken, folks. What happened was there's some creosote and some soot and all that, and we had a little bit of rain and it all gunked up on the corners. And uh, the, the guy, when he came by, he couldn't close, he couldn't open the damper because it's uh, uh, kind of glued shut by soot. So I'm gonna take me my uh, trusty screwdriver, gonna clean things out. I got a brush down here, um, got things all kind of cleaned up and we're gonna fix our flume and knock out one of the section one things. Here we go. Now here's an example of uh, how we can use this atomic beam flashlight that we reviewed. I'm, I'm gonna put up right up in here a link so you can see that video. It's a pretty cool little flashlight, inexpensive. Um, is it like for life saving and all of that? Probably not, but for doing a job like this where it's real dark up there. Oh, that's dark. Um, look at that, it's gonna do a fine job. So let's uh, take the atomic beam and get up there and see what we need to to fix this. There you go, stand it up in the corner. Now evidently the problem here has been when you pull on this, you can see how it wants to open, but the edges are not. That tells me it's all kind of gunked up. So we're going to start with the corner over there, take my screwdriver, clear all that out, and uh, kind of like this, and yeah, it's going to get soot and everything everywhere, so you're going to want to protect stuff around. We'll be right back and I'll show you how it turns out. Let me tell you, Zep Fast 505 uh, powers through grease and grime. It really does. They didn't pay me to say that. I'm not endorsing their product officially. I'm just telling you, my experience with this stuff was really good. Here's what happened up here. I was able to kind of break free the hinges that were all gunged up over here with the screwdriver, but the, but the actual hinges here in the lever were the things that were causing some problems. So I got a lot of that soot out of there, which worked out pretty well. Hey, focus, would you? Uh, thank you. And uh, once I got the soot all taken care of, and you could see all sorts of junk kind of ended up everywhere. This was just some creosote and uh, uh, water and time, and you know, just over about six months, it was just a complete mess. There's that flashlight, it's working handy. Anyway, we'll get up here and now you will see when you pull on it, the flume is open, the flume is closed. The flume is open, the flume is closed. So let that be a lesson to you guys. Uh, after a period of time and some fires, these hinges that are here on the levers uh, do get gunked up and stuck. And all you gotta do is unstick them, flip. Very simple, just like this. Fixed. Okay, move on to the next thing. By the way, before I go any further, make sure you put plastic down on all the areas and some paper down where you don't want that soot to go because trust me, it goes everywhere. And wear face protection, eye protection because it gets all over your face too. I guess before I move on, I better clean all this up, huh? Later. There you go, all swept up. Nice little broom, did the job well. All the way down to the cleanup. Close that up. Now we gotta put the logs back. One eternity later. Logs are back in. Okay, for those of you that may not know, when we did that clean out and it went down inside the, uh, the, you know, the firebox there, it goes underneath the house and the clean out is right back here. Right here. On the outside of the house, uh, in back of the fireplace and the firebox, we got this little clean out. You pull that out and oh, there's some spiders in there, but that's where all the stuff goes. And then you, uh, um, at least, once a year, you know, at the uh, at the end of winter when you're done using it, which we have yet to do for this summer, is you take and you clean all this soot out, and then it's a nice clean box inside of there. Once again, for more soot. Okay, item number two on section one was uh, in the dining room. There evidently is a plug here that when it was tested um, was not properly grounded. So using one of these tools, you can test uh, each of the outlets to see which one is the one that needs to be corrected to make sure that it's properly grounded. All right. Um, briefly, if the center yellow light lights up and nothing else lights up, I got a ground problem. If both yellows light up, 
I'm okay. So let's check them, shall we? Okay, so this is an outside wall, used to be, and uh, we had an addition done, and this wall was part of that addition. So I can show you that as I plug this in with a ground, both lights light up. That means properly grounded. Okay, let's check the other one, because there's another one over here on the other side of the hutch. In the dining room, kitchen area, that's where the call out was. Both lights come on, that means it's correct, it's properly grounded. All right, in the dining room, on the other side of the wall, an interior wall where there was no um, reconstruction, we have another outlet. Let's plug that baby in there. Uh-oh, we got a problem. Now, I got an explanation for that. Uh, this is an interior wall that we didn't do any construction with, and because of the age of the home, it's uh, totally permissible not to be grounded, it's to be expected. And because it wasn't part of a construction project, it didn't need to be converted to anything newer in the code. This, this falls under the older portion of the code of the home. Now, it might be nice to have a ground on there, but it isn't necessary. But why is it showing up ungrounded and I have a grounded plug? Um, that's something I did that I would recommend never doing. Uh, I did it out of convenience only so that we would have uh, a plug that we can plug in with a ground here if necessary and we rarely ever used it in that capacity and so what I'm gonna do is I have the original equipment right here there, there it is uh, two prong style no ground I'm gonna reinstall that put the original wall plate back on there and uh, we'll be all fine it'll still show up with no ground but it's designed not to be grounded and like I said back in the day that was totally permissible now of course before you get started with any electrical work you want to make sure that the electricity is turned off and that's what we're going to do right now uh, we're here at the uh, control panel and uh, we're going to pop the little lever there and then you know everything is kind of labeled here we're going to find the breaker and shut it off and i think it's this one right dining room outlets right there uh, north wall room, outlets, living room. Uh, I think I just killed it all. I killed two circuits. We're gonna check inside and this is how we do it. Now as you can see, the center light is not on any longer, so I'm pretty sure the power is off, but uh, I have one of these uh, by Klein, and uh, this is just one of the tools that I have in my tool belt. I've worked as an electrician in the past, and uh, I'm gonna turn it on, and what it does is it it finds to see that there's electricity or not. And I can, on here, slide this baby into there and the light stays green. Oh, it turned red, but that's because I banged it. Yep, it is safe. You wanna see what it does when it's not safe? Over here, we know this is an outlet that is working well um, with this particular tool, which is great. I recommend it for any of you that are working in electrical work and are confident with that. Um, you put it close to where there's some heat <laughs> and it goes red and that says, uh, you know what, danger. All right, let's start taking this thing apart. Very simple. Gonna unscrew all this. Don't lose the screws. Okay, be very careful here. I know that we've already checked it, but with electricity, you cannot be too safe. I don't know if you've ever been electrocuted before, but I have been bit a couple of times, <laughs> and you would think after one time I would learn. No, it took me two. And so now I'm very, very cautious. Neither of them were life-threatening, but they were enough to, the first one was just a thrill. The second time it happened, which was a little while later, um, it was enough to get my attention that, you know what, I value my life too much. Okay, I'm gonna turn this guy on. I'm gonna really make sure, I'm gonna stick it right in there. The light is green. Now, if you, if you hit this, it will turn red because of some inductance issues along with the, because of the, uh, the tool. But if you slide that in there on the hot side, slide it on the other side, I'm reasonably certain that circuit is off, especially when you plug something in and no lights turn on. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, there's some of the original wiring. That is the original wiring from the house because this was not a part of a reconstruction or a remodel. It's totally adequate to have two uh, wires like this and not a third one for ground so we're going to replace uh, the old receptacle for convenience sake which we shouldn't do <laughs> we're going to replace it with this now we've labeled this one ungrounded as well it's obvious but it's always better to be safe than sorry let's go put the power back on let's put 
break is back on. There you go, living room. Close this up, we'll go check inside. Breakers are on. Now because this is a two prong and not a three prong style, that other tool won't work because I can't plug it in because it's designed for three prong. That's where this tool comes in very, very handy. I put it in there, the light is red. It's not beeping because, there you go, because I had it in silent mode. But it is hot and we're good to go. As you can see, there are just a lot of things, folks, that we're trying to get into compliance um, for this report and for the sale of the home. These buyers are the best buyers in the world, too. I mean, they've been cooperating with us. We've been cooperating with them. These are the right people for this home. I'm really happy about that. There's one other thing that we needed to do, and there's a uh, rafter tail. Let me show you that. There's a rafter tail up there that's uh, got a little bit of dry rod on there. We don't know exactly why, but it happens from time to time. So uh, we replaced the dry rotted portion of it, and uh, all we got to do is bondo that up and paint it. And I'll show you that when it's all done. I'm going to wait. It's about 100 degrees outside today here, folks. So uh, we'll do that when the temperature gets a little cooler in the evening. Get that bond out and painted, and we'll be ready to go. There is one other little item, though. As we come inside the kitchen, there's one more electrical item that we need to work on, and it's above the uh, microwave oven here. Inside the uh, area where the hood is with the vent, uh, there's exposed wiring, which was OK in the day. But uh, they would like to, the buyers would like to have that taken care of so that it's not exposed any longer. It got called out on the uh, inspection as a uh, possible issue. So we're going to take care of that for the buyer. And I've got an electrician coming in and uh, he's going to help me out with it. As an electrician that I've worked with in the past, he and I are going to knock this thing out um, very shortly. And here we're here and guess what? We're getting that thing done. It's right up there. The electrical work is getting done. And uh, we're almost there. We almost got all the stuff done. It's just a matter of time, energy, and help. Derek, he's been great. Thank you so much, Derek. Appreciate no it. Happy it's, to. it's getting done. All right, we've got more. Hang tight. Day two. There it is. There's the rafter tail right there. And it's uh, all painted, repaired. The, the paint's kind of fresh on it. That's why it looks a little different color. But once it dries, it's going to be all OK. And we got that done. There you go. That's. Not it. <laughs> That's not the half of it, folks. There was plumbing to do. There was a whole mess of stuff. But Shooting Kid got out there, helped me with the rafter tail. I had some buddies come in, took care of a couple of different things. As you saw um, <laughs> with our little trusty uh, atomic beam, I'll put a link down below for this flashlight and the review that we did on that flashlight. It worked terrific to mm -hmm. look up the chimney. <laughs> and wow. uh, let's see, the last thing was, uh, what was the last thing? Uh, oh, the electricity, yeah. Matt and Derek, thanks guys, appreciate you a lot. Shout out to those guys. I'll put a link down below to how to contact them. They're great electricians, and uh, if you're local to them, they're local to you, you can uh, you know, look them up and they'll help you out. I'll put a link down below. Hey, to the winners that were picked last contest, um, things have been hectic around here, but guess what? We just shipped your package, so you guys should be getting that really soon. Yeah, just a few more days, you'll get your packages. Congratulations, by the yep. way. Yeah, and that brings up another point. We're opening up another contest. What? I know. A few weeks back, we said Swabit sent us more swag. So we want to get that swag to you all. And uh, so this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. It's still very simple. But instead of two chances to win, six. Six chances to win. That's right. We've got, uh, let's see, four pair of hats and mugs, just like we did before. And then we got two extra mugs giving us a total of six opportunities to win. So please Cis. enter. What did I say? Cis. Cis? Cis. Oh, seis. 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 Six. Cis. Yeah, Spanish. Yeah. You're, getting your, you're getting your Spanish on there, shooting oh, kid, aren't you? What happened? Oh, very flashy light. Yeah, very bright. So uh, anyway, go, I'll put a link down below. Uh, all you got to do is go to the web page, fill out the form, you're entered, and we'll have a contest uh, drawing or a giveaway drawing in uh, probably... Mm, that would be weird. Yeah, probably about four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, next week's video is going to be super really cool. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of something different. It's not going to be uh, pre-release. It's not going to be edited. It's uh, it's just going to happen. It's going to happen. It's something that we've never done before. Yeah. And don't think it's a live thing because we've done live before. This is even more unique for yeah. us than that. Yeah. Right? It's just going to be different. I don't want to say unique. That makes it sound like we're Stone Ages. Okay, it's different. It's different for us. 
um, and hopefully you guys all enjoy it. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be doing something very special, so I think Shooting Kid's probably going to. Uh, you guys get to see me. Yeah, I get to see oh, him, and gosh. and uh, he'll be doing the camera work. So hey, you get to see your dog. Hey, you get to see the dog. Yeah. All right. So that's all we got for this week. Yep. Uh, thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it a lot. If you're a subscriber, thumbs up to you. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. We're doing some crazy and wacky things, mm -hmm. and in the next upcoming weeks, all will be revealed yep. all right don't forget to go down below enter the contest to win we got more uh ways to win yep. uh what else don't forget to us on snapchat twitter and instagram and facebook we're probably going to be using all the social media platforms more um definitely more and so yeah don't go check us out like right now check it out right now right now now yeah we're awesome right all right so, yeah. as we always say god bless you god bless america and may america bless you God. Thing. Oh, I just gave oh. it away. <laughs>